Hi, and welcome back to the C Sharp Beginner tutorial series for the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we learn about linear interpolation. Linear interpolation, which is often shortened to LERP, is the process of gradually changing a start value to a target value. And this can be very useful in the games that we're making because we can use it to smoothly animate models or to move a platform like an elevator or rotate the camera smoothly around a point of interest. And this lerping can be done with all sorts of values. This could be a float, this could be a, a vector 2 or a vector 3. And in the tutorial scene that I've opened here, you can see that I have the linear interpolation scene opened and we have this crate displayed in the middle of our scene and I've attached a lerp demo script. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a timer, let's say three or five seconds, and then we have our crate move from one position to another position over time. And then once that timer is done, we will get a new target position and then the crate will move to that position. So in our script, let's first add a public float that defines the actual animation time. We're going to set that to three seconds for this example. Then we also need a timer variable that keeps track of the elapsed time. So let's, well, let's actually call it just elapsed time. And then we have need to have two private variables that keep track of the starting position of our crate and the end position of our crate. So this is going to be a vector three. Start and an end. There we go. Now let's store these variables when we start running our game. So start position is going to be entity dot transform dot position. And the same thing goes for end position. We need to have some sort of vector three. So we can say end vector three. And let's say for now that it is at value one on the X axis and two on the Y axis and zero on the Z axis. Let's start with that. Okay, now we need to update our crate or our crates position with the actual lerping that we want to apply. So the first thing that we need here is the delta time as always game update time dot elapsed total seconds then we need to update our elapsed time timer with that delta time and now we need to calculate the lerp value because when we do lerping when we make use of those lerping methods we need to provide a value between 0 and 1 we'll see in a second why that is necessary so we're just going to say lerp value is the elapsed time divided by the animation time. So let's say that so far we've been one and a half seconds into our animation divided by the three, which is the maximum animation time that gives us a lerp value of 0.5. And now we can update the position. So we have our entity dot transform dot position is vector three dot lerp followed by three arguments starting with the start position the end position or target position and then as a third parameter we need to pass in that lerp value of somewhere between zero and one okay so now that we have this let's predict what's going to happen when we start our game when our game has started and we select the linear interpolation our crate will animate from its start position to its target position somewhere around here. But as you will have noticed, our crate is starting to move outside of our screen window. And that's because that lerp value, well, it just keeps on animating. Our timer doesn't stop. So eventually our value is no longer between zero and one. So there are a couple things we can do here. We can either uh, maximize our lerp value to a maximum of one, or in our case, we're just going to set a new target variable because that was the use case for this tutorial. So to help with that, we're gonna make a little if statement. 
if the elapsed time is higher than the animation time, then we want to set a new target vector. So let's make a new method for that. Set new target position and also reset timer. Bit of a long name, but it serves the purpose. And let's copy those two lines that we have up here. Let's, let's just get rid of them there and let's add them here. The first thing that we need to do is reset that timer. So our timer starts anew from zero. And then inside end position, instead of having this fixed target value or end position, let's create a random value. And for that to work, we need to create a random object from the random class. So I'm going to say private random, just like that. And then in our start method, we're going to say random is new random. And then between the parentheses, we can provide a unique seed. We don't have to, but every time we start our game and we make use of this random object, we will always get the same random value, even though every time you would get a new value, you would get the next random value, but it would be the same number. So in order to get an actual different number every time we run our game, we need to provide a seed. One way to do that is by saying game update time total, and then we can use milliseconds for that. This gives us a nice integer with the amount of milliseconds that the game has been running. And this sort of gives us always a nice random value. That method that we have here, we mustn't forget to call that at the beginning of our game. Otherwise, we don't have a target position to go to. And now let's use that random value inside our new vector that we're calculating. So we're going to say random dot next. And then between the parentheses, we have to say what the range is where we want to get a random value between. So we're going to say minus two and two for the X position. And let's do something similar for the Y position. You know what, that can be a little bit higher, but we don't want to go underground. And the Z axis, you know what, let's do that as well. Minus one and plus one. Okay, looks like we're all set to go. Our game is started and you can see we get a different target location this time and every time the target position has been reached we get a new target position where our crate is going to animate towards to.